Hey, now we're going to move into a little bit more advanced layout technique, and by advanced, just it's more recent in time that it was implemented. And it has some really nice qualities that you'll see solve some of the problems that we encountered in Skills 1 and Assignment 1, um, having to do with layout and spacing items horizontally and vertically around on the page. So let's take a look at this. Um, this is the five Flexbox layout. And in this, you are given some an index HTML as well as a preliminary CSS. So let's just take a quick look at what it looks like before we do anything. We have it's it's an experimental um, a tutorial, so we're going to be doing it so we can get an idea of what flex what the flex properties do. And, and um, so we have this idea: we're going to have flex without wrap, and then we're going to have flex with wrap. And then we're going to do a justify center, and then we're going to do some space between. But right now, nothing is really styled. But if you look at the image um, in the README, we can get a better idea of what we're trying to get to. So when we have flex without wrap, what's going to happen is that these paragraphs here will shrink as you shrink the window. So the pair, the, the these paragraphs inside of the flexed container will shrink when we don't allow for wrap. When we allow for wrap, the paragraphs will stay the same size, but as we shrink the page, we'll see them wrap around. So it'll end up looking like we're going into two dimensions. And then we have this justify center. So in this case, we have a couple of paragraphs, but we are going to use something that will force them to go to the center of the page. And we know that's helpful because a lot of times we do want to center content on the page. So that's kind of a neat deal. And in fact, you can use a line center and justify together, and you can actually get something to go right to the very both vertical and horizontal center of the page, which used to require quite a bit of work. It's surprising how much that took to make that happen. Um, and then we're going to also see that we can spread our content out along a dimension. And here we have like three bits of content. But doesn't this look familiar like what we had to do some work with positioning and, you know, floating and whatnot to get this to happen before? But now we can just use a property in CSS to create that. So that's what we're aiming for here. Um, there is some reading. And um, it's it's worth taking a minute to look at that. Basically, I'm telling you that you know we used to use tables that that table tag, which was never meant for it to do this kind of layout. We would you know create a bunch of grid, you know, a bunch of cells, and we'd leave some of them blank, and then we'd fill other ones in with content, and that's how we did layout. And it wasn't really the right way to do it. But flex was one of the things that came along, and it took a long time, seven years, didn't get released to 2015. The spec didn't get into browsers till 2017. I mean, it was, you know, a long time coming. And we're going to see an even newer one um, in the next exercise. But but this provides a lot of um, functionality with without having to do a lot of kind of what might seem like hacky, you know, trick type workarounds um, to get it to happen. So let's take a look at how this works. Oh, there's also some references here. There's a game, Flexbox Froggy, and if you take a look at that, you'll see you can play this game, and it'll get you into using all of the different properties that Flexbox has. So that's up to you if you want to play that. All right, so we're going to start in by uh, this experimentation We by looking at the fact that we do have this index HTML. Um, and we saw earlier that it is rendering just a set of paragraphs. And if you look in here, you can see that we have a div that will be our flexing parent, and it contains a bunch of uh, empty paragraphs with, you know, no dimension right now. Or, or maybe actually we do have some dimension because we've got this style sheet that um, gives dimension to our paragraphs. So we're getting 100 pixel height, 400 pixel width background blue. So we, we've got that dimension already set up. But uh, we, we don't have any flexing going on, so everything is just coming out, you know, straight, you know, just vertically. 
but we want to look at the effects of adding different kinds of flex properties. Um, in particular, we are going to start with, uh, let's see, we'll move that to the right, maybe we can do that, oh, let's see. So we can kind of look at this alongside. The first thing we want to do is to flex it without wrap. And so what we need to do is find this first header and we want to add a class equals flex no wrap. So we're going to see the effect of flexing without, without the wrap property. And so in here, in our style sheet, we can just add the flex no wrap. And then if we look over here, you can see we've got these things flexed, so they're they're running, and that they never wrap. So they just the paragraphs just get as small as they possibly can, and then they uh, they don't get any smaller. So that is the effect of not wrapping is to change the size of the content. Flex is doing that that for you. So that's one one thing that we want to look at. Second thing we'll look at is letting it wrap. So now we want to add a flex wrap class. So our flex wrap will, in the parent of these paragraphs, we'll add class equals flex wrap. And then we will give it a little bit of style, which you can see it's a very simple amount of code. You know, it's not having to think too hard about too many um, elements or, or properties, we basically are going to say flex it and flex wrap it. And so by putting that in, we can see that these things, they wrapped for us and they'll continue to wrap. And isn't that nice? We automatically got it responsive. So by, because that's what we're after in a responsive layout, right? It, when we go to the smaller sizes, it runs vertically. So that's kind of cool. That gives us responsiveness um, without having to do anything more than just indicate wrap inside that container. And then we have the idea of justify center. So this is something that we know we like to do. We've used margin auto for that. And um, there's, you know, some other ways, but this is kind of neat. So with this, we are going to uh, do the flex justify center. So if I look at this, what we want to do now is add this flex center class to our container class equals. And these containers are using divs, it's non-semantic, it's really all about layout, and we don't need the screen reader to really pick up on that. Um, and then we add a rule for that to our CSS that says display it flex and justify content center. And remember, justify content works in the same dimension as the flex, and we're flexing horizontally. I'm not showing you here, but you can do a display, you know, flex direction vertical, and then you're you're automatically flexing in a vertical direction, and your justify content would work vertically. Um, and you know, so you, when you're using flex, you've got to be thinking about what direction you're flexing in. And in this experiment, we're always flexing horizontally. But if we grab that flex um, center and add it to our style sheet, we can see that it took our paragraphs and moved them to the center. And we didn't have to say, you know, uh, anything like, you know, give the margin 10 pixels on each side or, you know, 10% or anything. It just is centering them. And there's a few other, um, like if we, uh, do space uh, evenly say there's there's a, a bunch of different ways that it will spread them out in the dimension that you're talking about and we're going to look at another one of those here this center is just one of them in the next experiment so in this final experiment we have this concept we have a footer so let's look at that we have a footer, and we've worked with footers before, and we often want to spread out the data along the footer. Um, so we have this class copyright, and it's, it's an unordered list. And 
we just want these list items to be spread evenly out across the page with the two on the end kind of butted up against the end. So um, what we're told to do is find this unordered list with the class copyright. And then we've also got a declaration block in here for, for the copyright. And what we want to do is to give this um, some dimension. So we're going to just add height 100% here. And I don't know if that's going to, that just gives us the total height of 100% because often we need to have height in order to get this to, to respond. Um, and then this will cause parent to fill the container. Footer has a height of 100, 100 pixels. Okay, so that's already been set up that it had 100 pixels and now we're saying that the list is 100%. So it's going to fill that, that footer container. And then we're going to um, add this justify content space between a line item center to our UL copyright. So if we look at what this does now, we doesn't seem to have taken it all the way. Ah, one thing we need to do, don't forget to flex the UL. So our UL copyright, we added a line item and justify items where a line items would take care of vertical centering because it is the, the opposite dimension of what we're flexing. Justify would take care of horizontal alignment or horizontal flexing, uh, but we need to flex this container. So display flex. We always need to flex it. So justify and align go in the parent container along with display flex. Um, and let's just see what happens here. So now, yes. So um, justify, which is set to space between, is giving the equal space between all of the items along a horizontal axis. And align is giving a centering, a vertical centering along the, the, the uh, vertical axis. All right, so this is looking good. Let's check this in. Uh, okay, um, so this is Flexbox, and this is really just an introduction to it and to kind of give you a feeling of, of what flexing is about, how it works on the um, parent, you know, how it's assigned to the parent, but it manages how the children are laid out and it can affect both horizontal and vertical uh, layout. I tend to think of it as a, as a one dimensional layout because we only pick one dimension for it to flex in, but the net effect can end up looking two dimensional due to wrapping and the ability to um, affect the opposite dimension through the align items. All right.